Hello, Bryce. Hello, Elise. Well, it's Christmas time. I'm home for five weeks, and that means we've got a lot of Christmas specials to watch. You know, during the season, we're surrounded by so many characters. Santa Claus, Ebenezer Scrooge, uh, John McClane. But one character that really represents the true meaning of Christmas is the Grinch, who realizes what Christmas is really all about when he strips it completely bare of capitalism. His story is a timeless Christmas classic and truly one of Dr. Seuss's masterpieces. And then in 1982, a tune came out that showed us that apparently the Grinch threw all that personal growth out the window. Ladies and gentlemen, we present to you The Grinch Grinches the Cat in the Hat. <laughs> This tune is a miracle. It's one of the biggest crossovers in the Seuss catalog, and it made absolutely no impact on anyone or anything. But you know what's really bizarre? It won two Primetime Emmys! Outstanding Animated Program and Outstanding Individual Achievement in Animation for the director Bill Perez. It was up against two Smurfs episodes and two Charlie Brown episodes, so maybe that was wait, why Wait, 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 wait. It, it, does that say the clockwork Smurf? Is that supposed to be a reference to the Clockwork Orange? Uh. The last good Seuss special was 1973's Dr. Seuss on the Loose, a three-parter with the Sneetches, the Zacks, and Green Eggs and Ham. Mmm! <laughs> oh, say! I like Green Eggs and Ham! After that, the quality goes downhill really quickly. I mean, the Hoover Bloob Highway, Halloween is Grinch Night, Pontoffel Pock, Where Are You? They have some pretty creative elements, but otherwise, it's all just really cheap filler. And another bizarre thing is, is that Seuss himself was the head writer and producer of all these projects. My guess is that he put minimal energy into these so that he could crank out more quality books. Because between 73 and 82, he put out some really good stuff, like Walking in My Pocket, Oh Say Can You Say, I Could Read With My Eyes Shut. Don't forget the many mice of Mr. Bryce. Uh, yeah. That period between Seuss on the Loose and Grinch Grinches is more or less bookended by 72's Lorax and 84's Butter Battle Book. So sure, he wasn't producing sharp social commentary for a good decade, but lord knows, during that decade he put more backing into better work than the Grinch Grinches the Cat in the Hat. So here's the VHS cover for this tune, and oh god, I can tell this isn't gonna be good. It looks like it was taken out of a Dr. Seuss sticker book. That cat is not in the correct depth of field. Also, I love how the selling point of this tape is that it's fully animated. As opposed to what? Partially animated? What were they worried about? Random live action sequences? So first the title card gives us an introductory shot of our protagonists. And then... Who... who... who's the these? I think he's... they... I think it's from Osei Can You Say. What is he doing here? Existing? Maybe it's like a Seuss stamp of approval. Oh, look at how much of a crossover this is! But then again, if it was just this guy, the Grinch and the Cat in the Hat, who signed up for this crossover, and not the Lorax or the Fox and Socks or the kids from One Fish, Two Fish, we might be in trouble. It sure was a beautiful morning. The sun came up glowing and glitzling. And when the dawn broke, all the Whitzel birds woke. The Whitzel birds all woke up whistling. Do you have anything to say about these guys? Not really, except that the Witzelberg sequence that totally isn't the repetition of the same 10 frames takes up a full 20 seconds. Oh, great. Even the Grinch woke up whistling. Um, why doesn't he live on Mount Crumpet anymore? And is that a mansion or is he living in ruins? How can he afford anything in this house? And is that a cactus? You're asking way too many questions. Oh, and also this scene goes on for too long. To the birds in the sky. Shake your ass! Watch yourself! And then he starts talking to his mirror. Which brings us to my favorite game in this whole tune. Find the Continuity Error! And a very good morning to you, Mr. Grinch. Oh, it is, is it? I think the time has come for thee to repeat the Grinch's Oath with me. The Grinch's Oath? Are there multiple Grinches? Does that not make him THE Grinch? That'd be like if you woke up in the morning and said the Bryce Oath. I'm a Grinch! That's my boy! My boy! 
Okay. He's his dad now? Was he banned by the Who's to a mirror dimension or something? Prove I'm a Grinch. Ha! You know, the Grinch had reasons to hate Christmas. I mean, the annoying singing and the noise and the feast. This was all stuff that he just didn't like. Here he has to be convinced to hate something. He has to take an oath. What the hell? And a whistle to you. <laughs> and then we meet the cat in the hat. D does he live in Whoville now? Shh. And he's basically Jiminy Cricket if he was a terrible person. He doesn't really care about anyone or anything. He just puts on this aw shucks attitude and doesn't do much. Oh, except for sing forced rhymes. It's gonna be a beep and leap and moo moo of a day. A fuzzy berry, Beasley berry, Lulu of a day. So the songs in this were created by Joe Raposo. It's not that easy being green. Yeah, that Joe Raposo. And honestly, these songs are cute and they show off Raposo's melodic talent. But it's sort of an involuntary talent. They're good in the same way that Alan Menken wrote good songs for Home on the Range. We don't speak of Home on the Range, Elise. Oh, yeah. For the mouse. Still, it's fun to see talented composers not give a crap. So, the cat goes on a picnic and parks like a jerk, and the Grinch responds appropriately. You get this crate out of my way. I am tremendously so, so sorry, Mr. whatever your name is. And I guess I the cat doesn't know who the Grinch is. Is. So the cat and the Grinch are respectively played by Mason Adams and Bob Holt, who also played the Lorax and the Wunzler in one of the greatest Zeus tunes ever made. But in the original tunes, they were played by Alan Sherman and Boris Karloff. They both passed away before this tune was produced. And while these gentlemen are talented voice actors, there's just something missing. You will note I am neat. Wiped my feet on the mat. If you will be so kind as to hold my hot dog, that's a good fella. Them mouths will hang out for the minute or two, then the who's down in Whoville will all cry boo-hoo. Obstructivating my mobility, willity. Come to think of it, if they couldn't get the original voices, why did they make the cartoon to begin with? Because Dr. Seuss needs some money? It seems about right. I will de-blockerize and de-obstructivate- Shut up mobile, and move your car! You He's been smiling, smiling this whole time! I deplore any inconveniencialities that I may have caused you, Mr. Greenface? Greenface? I thank you. Oh, hey, another continuity error. And then a thrilling car chase ensues with some incredibly cheap backgrounds. Apparently what we have here is the extended cut because the DVD release ends the car chase here. But I don't understand why they have to remove this- Oh god, his eyes! And then the cat sings a continuity error song. And after skipping an entire row on his driveway, he continuity error sings one of the most forced rhymes in the whole Seuss oeuvre. Your life's full of boulders, but shrug your shoulders, just shrug your shoulders. Yeah, sing that twice. That was genius. Relax. In this world of What do you think it says when you slow that down? Let's find out. Why you take the come to continue to get up and take out your guard you? Oh no no I'm not gonna I'm going out yourself. So basically Paul is dead. Good as answer as any. That face freaked me out so much when I was a kid. Having problems, Mr. Cat in the Hat? Come inside. How'd you get in my house, Mr. Greenface? We only just met today. I'm calling the cops. This, sir, is my acoustical anti audio bleeper. Zem plausible, zem possible, unreasonable, and unlawsible. Such things never happen in the middle of the day. It just did. And if they do, I ignore them, and they're bound to go away. That's the lesson of this tune, ladies and gentlemen. The original Cat in the Hat taught us that rule breaking is fun if you can get away with it, and now this cat is teaching us to ignore things you don't understand. What a great role model. So, did he just build that today? Sure, I mean, why else would he have a whole musical number about it? 
Born again, off again, make the sound cough again. I am the boss of what everyone hears. This is making me wonder what would happen if Boris Karloff had a song in the first tune. Fall forest, thou Taurus, welcome Christmas. The sounds that you make are the sounds of my choice. I can make you sound better or make you sound worse. Dr. Seuss, everybody. When I wish to hear moos, I can hear them from moos. Not from me. Took him a while for him to notice that mooing, didn't it? Good job, cat. And property damage. Good job, Grinch. Hey, there's the name of the next TV special right there. No. Puzzle flub master of everyone's ears. So this tune is basically how the Grinch stole sound from the cat in the hat and mildly annoys him. That cat, that Beezleberry cat. Okay, what did the cat even do to you? You saw that terrible parking job. Yeah, but that's no reason for breaking and entering, property damage, stalking, and stealing sound. You think that's junk science? Here's a whole song about that. Oh wait, but first, <laughs> got new dares. So fun. This is the legal gear, and as you know, it goes round and it makes the legal gear go. Why? Why is this a song? This is the same as the last song. And that brings about the most horrible things. Wait, go back! Max faded away! He disappeared into the ether! He is no more! Illuminati confirmed! Do you know what a lighthouse is? A lighthouse makes light. So, just for a lark, I built me a dark house. A dark house makes dark. The idea of the dark house was taken from the cat's quizzer of all books. These guys were desperate for ideas. I can't see my mitten in front of my face. Well, we can. Does that say more about you, the animators, or us? How is the Grinch doing that? The angle of that makes no sense. And how can the Grinch even see him? The window does not go in that far. Does the cat have a skylight we didn't see? Oh, maybe it's a sky dark. <laughs> oh boy, if I had a psychiatrist couch, I'd find out what's wrong with that grinchy grouch. Is there something in your family tree that causes Grinch delinquency? So, you remember that really beautiful song in the Lorax cartoon where the one starts talking to himself and battling with the ethical problems of keeping the, the need factory open? It seems like this song is trying to be like that, except... As a boy, were you never a good boy scout? Did you ever eat too much sauerkraut? Dr. Seuss and Joe Raposo wrote that. Maybe your mother. And we've got Freudian. Right. Absolutely, positively. Absolutely, positively. That's a lot of rot. One of the most difficult patients I've ever had. I'm going to have to make a house call. The cat in the hat is visiting the Grinch because of a fictional conversation they had with each other. This is the tipping point. What is going on? It's like they're stalking each other now. And they only just met today. Well, maybe maybe the, that song and those fade shots were supposed to represent time passing by or something. So the cat was playing that pink mandolin the entire time? Well, what was he supposed to do? Break into other kids' houses to show them how to have fun? And that's another thing. Where are things one and two? Or the other cats from The Cat in the Hat comes back? Are they in the closet under that monstrous pile of hats? Why do you need so many hats? You have no reason to have that many hats. Who are those hats for? And did he always have this summer home in the same town where the Grinch lives? Is it Whoville still? Where are the Who's? Where are we? This universe is just too inconsistent. Relax. You 
shut up! You don't understand my pain! This, this one, two Emmys! Jesus, calm down. <laughs> two Emmys! And we have more cheap backgrounds. Where is the camera even? Oh, look, Yurtle's here. You see, this is a huge crossover. Isn't Yurtle supposed to represent Hitler? I hate this term. And as the cat goes into town, we begin the acid trip. Wait, there was a town? With architecture lifted from San Diego? Oh wait, excuse me, I meant to say... Thunder. So, are they used to having cats in their establishment? Is that why the waiter is dragging him to the table? May I suggest the sizzling chef special? But I'm not hungry. An excellent choice. Coming soon from Dr. Seuss Entertainment, How the Grinch Stole Free Will. Here you are, sir. Man, that was quick. I think that was quicker than Little Caesars. Mmm, I didn't bring my wallet. Watch this. I'll give him a double gadickle Flumax Deluxe. Wow. Rude. And the mind screw begins in three, two. Oh, what? It, everything's monochrome, and the waiters are separate people who don't notice this is happening, and it's monochrome. Now it's in color, and uh, oh, now the Grinch is. Uh, wait, the, the sound waves? And, why? Uh, why is any of this. What is it? Who? What? Price? This one too ends. That Grinch. That Grinch. He hates cows. He hates cats. He hates frogs. He hates doves. I hate buildings. I hate trees. But most of all, most of all, yes. I hate this fucking puzzle. <laughs> Roundy Dow, I've got it, I've got it! So now we've got an anti-Grinch angry mob who's being led by this random cat who doesn't wear any pants and didn't even want to eat at that restaurant. So let's see how they make the Grinch realize that perhaps Christmas is a little bit more. Soften your heart, remember your mother. Oh, guilt. Passive aggression and guilt. Remember how hard mother worked to afford you Wait, 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 go back to that. How is a continuity error in the same shot? And these guys have the worst dubbing ever. Wait, 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 wait a second. Is that Cindy Lou Who? I knew it. I knew it. This explains everything. This takes place in the future. A post-apocalyptic future where the Grinch and the cat are living together, Mount Crumpet has fallen to pieces, and global warming has destroyed the human race and replaced it with Dr. Seuss creatures. Everything the Lorax did is in vain! And all we have to show is these stupid cartoons! No! Well, this confirms that both of the Grinch's parents were banished into the mirror dimension. Now be a good boy and clean up your room. Why is his maybe dad evil, but not his mom? And why are her words of wisdom, clean your room? Mom, what do you think? Clean your room. So the Grinch is a changed man, and he goes back to tell his mirror. One last continuity error. I think the time has come for thee to repeat the Grinch's <laughs> Oh, Max, I knew I could always count on you. It was his story arc, after all. And that was The Grinch Grinches the Cat in the Hat. It had no stakes, no payoff, no reason to exist, but it's a masterpiece. It's so bad it's good, it's bad it's good. It's so carelessly made that it's fun. The most creative energy was clearly put into the acid trip sequence, and everything outside of that is inconsistent, sloppy, and just joyous. And that makes it so fun to riff. Well, Bryce, Merry Late Christmas. And Merry Late Christmas to you, too. I'll see you... here. Me, too. Merry Christmas, everyone. Yeah. You're a mean one, Mr. Grinch. You really are a eel. You're as ugly as captain, as charming as an eel, Mr. Grinch. You're a bad
fried banana with a greasy black peel. I'm already better than this. <laughs> <laughs>